Greetings. So you want to learn how to stick curl. We are standing today, we're going to be uh, taping this at National Country Club's Sports Complex. Uh, I want to thank uh, my two uh, associates here this morning, uh, Rob Kluger and Dr. Ryan Barclay. I'm Warren Barclay. Welcome to Stick Curling. Why? Why do all of us want to turn to stick curling? I personally am that large number of people who have had curled for many years, have had physical issues develop over those years that made traditional cur curling uh, very uncomfortable, but at the same time, we did not want to lose the camaraderie and the ability to compete. So stick curling became my way of continuing to curl and embrace curling. We have a whole different group of curlers who they just join our club, they're a little uh, more mature, they look out on the ice, they know they can play here, but they don't feel like they can do it. They come out, they do introduction to curling, they physically are not able to curl. So what we do is we offer them stick curling as an option, it allows them to participate, play in league, play in social, and we embrace them into the curling family. Our goal today, as in the spirit of curling, is to expand the availability of curling to a larger number of people. Right? Now, what do we use? You see in my hand, rather than delivering with your hand, we have a stick, the curling stick. This particular stick is from Goldline. I'll show you there are several different kinds of stick, and um, I will show you them a little bit later in the presentation. Most of our presentation this morning is based on routine. Pre-shot routine is as important in curling and stick curling as it is in golf. The pre-shot routine is essential. So we're gonna go give you a step-by-step, -step, hopefully providing a, a, a quick learning curve to learn how to curl. Okay, first and foremost, so now we're gonna start that. And first and foremost, when you, you look up the ice, I'm standing behind the hat. I'm looking up, up, at, up at the ice. My skip is giving me a broom. I'm visualizing and I understand the shot. It's very important that you understand the shot. Okay. I'm gonna bend down. I'm gonna clean my stone, because you should always clean your stone. I set. I stick on the target. Now I have a straight line that goes from the handle up the stick to the center of my body, to the belly button. Now, I'm gonna step into the hack. Now you notice my foot is on the bottom flat part of the hack. We do that because we want our shoulders and our hips to be level. Now, we visualize the shot again. Make sure we're comfortable. Center the body on the stick. Take a deep breath. Relax. Thank you. We're gripping the handle initially. A V is in the hand, just like you would have in a golf club. Now, based on what the skip is asking for shot, we rotate to uh, 2 o'clock, or we rotate to 11 o'clock. So now we've set up our alignment. Turn our hand. As you can see, I've rotated my hand. My left hand is the guiding hand, as you would with a two-handed backhand in tennis. Okay? So that's only for support to help us maintain center body for as far as our relief is concerned. You take, you're thinking now about weight control, what's been called, as you start to walk towards your target. If you're being called on to throw a draw, you walk slowly. If you need to throw a takeout, you're gonna throw at a higher, you're gonna walk at a faster pace, okay? Now, when I get to the line, I'm gonna be, I, when I get to the hog line, or before the hog line, I'm gonna create the curl by bringing my hand to 12 o'clock. Now, relook at your, your line, make sure everything lines up. You're gonna take your step off, Nice slow pace because we're drawing. We're going to extend 
the arms. Keep walking through the shot. Now communicate with your sweepers all the way down. So I'm assuming right now he asked me to throw a guard. With a little sweeping, would have been a perfect guard. When we get to the line, we're walking and we're extending the arms. We're not shoving the stone. It's supposed to be a natural kind of a flow. Now, if you're trying to create significant weight, then as you walk to the line, you're gonna walk faster, faster, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna lean into the stone with your body weight to create some more speed right at the end of release. Now that we've shown you the basic protocol to, for curling in general, there are a number of questions that you usually pose uh, that I'd like to address while we have here. One of them is foot placement in the hat. Typically, in curling, we stand with our foot in the hat, And as you can see, as Rob focuses on it, that raises my right hip and it lowers my right shoulder to try to feel like I'm in balance. So what we do, as I reckon, is we put our foot low in the hack, the flat part of the hack. So now when I'm addressing the stone, my body is in balance. My hips are, are level, my shoulders are level, and I'm headed towards the target, okay? Now, so, uh, next is, is often people ask about judging the weight as you go. And as I said briefly in the presentation, weight is based on speed. You want to throw a draw, you walk slowly. You want to throw a heavier weight, you walk faster. If you want to get additional weight beyond that, you lean into the stone. Right? Very important that the delivery is a re fluid release from the elbows down the line. It's not a jagged push. All right, the next question that often comes up is timing, because in, in curling today we do a lot of timing. Timing in, in the, in, when it comes to the stick is very hard to do on the traditional back line to hog line. But from the hog line to the hog line, it still holds very true and accurate for judging weight as far as the ice is concerned. Uh, the sweepers, are your best friend. They have to get used to watching your weight and, and judging the weight based on the pace and the uh, actual pureness of the release of the stone. Just they would have, like they would have to do with the traditional curling. Okay? Now, there, there is this misconception in, in curling for people with the stick that they're great takeout players, but they're not very good draw players. Well, I tell you, if you practice, 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 you can draw with a stick as well as you can draw by hand. A uh, couple things on quick review on the grip is that I set up a V grip. I talk about a V grip, and the V grip is like a golf grip. And the V puts the center of your V, goes right down the stick to the handle. I'll put on the stone to the stone. So everything is in a line, and that line is directly at your groom and or your target, okay? That takes away a lot of pushes, pulls, etc. cetera. Okay. Now, uh, it's important that we talk a little bit about supplies. Now, in curling, we, as you can see, I've got several grooms. Okay, I use a very traditional stick, and I use a separate stick that I use for sweeping and timing. Okay. You'll also notice I have an addition on my stick and that I have tennis tape at the end on the recommendation of my wife in order to make it more stable for, for delivery. Okay. Now, this is my wife's stick and as you can see it has the broom on one end and the delivery piece which is just like mine on the other. So she gets two for one. Another stick is a scoping, telescoping stick, and it's a relatively simple design. You go, you can change the length. Traditional sticks like mine are 48 inches. This you can change it. I'm actually not sure if there's a legal limit one way or the other. 
I do know for wheelchair curlers that their sticks are significantly longer. Okay? It's important that we talk about grippers. It's very important that you have grippers on both shoes. There are people that, that do stick curl and they stick curl and they use a slider on one foot and a gripper on the other. Uh, I discourage that because if you fall while you're giving a, delivering a stick with a stick, you're likely to fall down, you're falling farther and you're more likely to hurt yourself. If you, you are a person who has any issues with balance, it might be a, a worthy consideration to get yourself a halo which is surround your head for protection and or some kind of a helmet. They're, they're fine, they're protecting. Um, many of you might say, um, how come you have a visor on? I like wearing the visor when I curl as well as when I play golf because I find this convexity kind of narrows my view as far as the, my target is concerned. You know, I, I have had a lot of fun doing this. We have all had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you'll embrace the stick. Get out there and enjoy the curling community. Um, good curling.